What up everyone, Edgar with All One Solar Shine. So good to be back, happy to see you all. Hopefully you guys are feeling the exact same way as well. Happy New Year, Merry Christmas. Can't believe it, 2024 already, right? When you're seeing this video, we are officially in 2024. We're excited and we're ready to just keep moving forward, make that huge jump and just boom, skyrocket this business a lot more. So stay tuned, so much more is coming, okay? In this video, we're gonna be talking about training employees, headaches, rewards all that and above right with when it comes to scaling out your business when it comes to not being an owner operator business okay i know a lot of you have called me over the year 2023 and i've had so many questions and a lot of those questions were pertaining to owner operators all right we're not an owner operator okay we actually have employees we want to scale this out so when scaling it out you get some headaches but guarantee you it's worth it stay tuned so edgar You've had about four or five employees. Yeah, over the, over the course of the time. What's the number one thing you've learned about training new people? What do you look for? First off, I'll start with my employees have all been great, okay? I've never had a bad employee. The ones that currently aren't with me, they're not with me because I fired them. It just didn't work out. It didn't work out for many reasons. One could be the height. You know, they wanted to give this a shot. After giving it a shot for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, they just said, you know what, this isn't for me. I want to go do something else, which is totally fine, right? The second thing could be um, just the labor, the, the labor intensive. Out here in Gilroy, even in, well, Gilroy is not too bad, but in Sacramento, I mean, we hit those 110, 115 heat days, right? So it gets pretty hot. Here on the ground, 110, 115. When you're up on a shingle roof, when you're up on a black tile roof or something, I mean, it's it's now 125, 130, right? Where you, you really feel that heat. So sometimes too, that led to just the employee not really having it, not enjoying it, not having it be his cup of tea, right? In the end, Long story short, like I said, we've gone through some growing pains because of these employees, but, but I think now I have a solid crew where you know they've been doing what they're supposed to be doing. And uh, when it comes to training, it just comes down to just really just helping them out, understand the full picture, helping them understand when it comes to planning, how to attack this, that way they you know, don't, don't do things th two or three, four times and killing time. Right now, they've already finished gutter cleaning and they're working on flushing everything out. Once it's all flushed, a clean up, and they're out of here. On to the next job. When you get a new employee, how, what do you explain? How do you describe their job? Are you like, hey, you're gonna be really high if you can't tough it out, get out? Or hey, let me walk you through it, you know? Hold their hand. Nah, man, honestly, I mean, the only way to get into this is jump right into it, honestly, you know? There's not that much of a learning curve to this job, so in my own personal experience is you get on the roof, and, and you do it, right? If you can't get on the roof and do it, then I'll know between that first two to three days, they say this is for you or it's not for you. That's really it. That's currently the position that we're doing right now because we definitely do have laborers, you know, up on the roof. As we scale this business out, we'll have also salesmen, right? So the salesmen won't have to get on the roof, right? But right now, the laborers are the ones getting up on the roof, they're the ones doing the job. Um, but like I said, when you as you grow your own business and you, you get those quote unquote departments, maybe you get someone in the office, maybe you get someone in the sales team, maybe you get you know, some laborers, then you can go and train your guys and you can see exactly what, who um, is best for what position, right? But right now, with All One Solar Shine, we're looking for laborers always, people that are ready to get up on the roof, get dirty, and get to work. All right, Ray, so what we're doing right now is we're actually gonna be, um, after we do the gutter cleaning, right, we also flush out the gutters. Flush out the gutters, flush out the downspouts, and it's a lot easier when you flush them out with the down with the with the pressure washer, obviously with low pressure though, we use special nozzles that allow that has a um, the opening a lot the that the nozzle is a lot larger in size, so that way it doesn't just shoot out so much water and so much pressure, creating such a big mess. It just creates a nice little stream of water, and that's what helps us push everything down the downspout. It helps us um, clean out the downspout as well. If there's any clogs, this is a really effective method, and the fact that we have these pressure washers here, it's able we're able to do it as well. So uh, thank you to Mark over at AM Pressure Washing. Remember, when he gives you these pressure washers, he also gives you a lot of the adapters as well. This skid right here also comes with the adapter, that way you're able to um, hook into the garden hose and that garden hose will feed into the pump and this is where, you know, how we get our water. So I want you guys to do this because you guys are saying you guys are having issues. So this is how you know, I mean, it's working properly. The water is going through the pump, it's coming out of the hose and you're, this is regular water right here. So when you're done, you take this off 
you connect it again and you run the ionized water because now you have regular water in this hose, 300 feet of hose. Yeah. So we gotta push all that water out to get it back to clean water. If not, all this calcium in here is gonna build up in this hose, okay? So we close this and you always turn it on because you want this to be wet, like water inside. Yeah. Dealing with employees, there's a lot of just little small um, training techniques. There's a lot of little small training windows, right? Whenever um, you're out here with your employees, you just wanna stay focused on them, making sure that they know exactly what they're doing, that they know how to handle everything. A lot of this stuff isn't rocket science, but hey, there can be user error, okay, when it comes to it. User error doesn't lead into anything extremely bad, so to speak, but I mean, it just helps slow them, it, not, it just slows them down, or it can maybe just have them do things twice, three times, because they didn't do it right the first time, right? But like I said, I'm glad we were able to work with Mark. That way we get all those attachments, all those adapters. He provides everything for us. That's his machine that he put together so he knows exactly what fits and what works, right? Um, we're able to come to the homeowner's house, attach to their hose, get the water up there, clean out the downspouts. All right, Edgar, so you're learning how to train people, be a boss. How do you handle when somebody, when one of your employees has a question or doesn't know how to use the machine or has to deal with a customer? asking questions is that something you guide them through you train them before or they learn on the job so a lot of things can be learned or can be taught beforehand right a lot of things can definitely be taught either first day of the job or um, when they when they get here and they haven't started yet right um, but there are some things just because every house is different for example here's a good one so if you take a look at this house, right, it's pretty self-explanatory. You get up on the roof, you scoop out the debris from the gutters, put in a trash bag, you know, wash it all out and you're done, okay? Now quickly raise, if you turn around, the top part where you have the solar panels, you know, depending on, I can't really see too much from here, but depending on how close those panels are from the edge, that's a little more trickier compared to the house that, that we're on right now, right? Because you can't just get up on the roof, walk the edge, scoop everything out into a trash can, clean the gutters out that way. So it takes a different technique to get there. So sometimes training is gonna come per job, right? Just because every house is different. Gutters are probably, you know, installed differently. Panels, when we're cleaning them, they're, they're installed differently. Roof pitches are all different. So um, when it comes to training, it's really a per job thing, right? Making sure that they, that they know what to do. The overall tackling it is gonna be the same, but just certain circumstances are gonna be at per job specific. And that's just when it comes to just having that trust in your team, the complete comfortness, or, or, or just knowing where you have, making sure that your employees know that they can call you and be like, hey, we're in, a, we're in a situation here, we don't know what to do, right? And it's okay, I want them to understand that it's okay if they don't know what to do, but just call me. Because the last thing I want them to do is try and figure out for, I don't know, three hours when they could have called me and I could have told them what to do, you know, for 10 minutes, you know, rather than wasting time trying to figure it out. So um, a lot of this has been a just a small learning curve because of, you know, per job specific situations. But in the end, overall, it just takes time, takes practice, takes doing it over and over again. Like for example, I showed you guys earlier, um, you know, switching out the attachment, that way you can, you can connect the regular water hose and not use a DI. All right, so follow me again. So I'm gonna tell Danny one more time. So when you're done with this water hose, like I told Junior, we now ran regular water through the pump and through this hose. So we got to connect this back up, open that and turn it on again to flush all that dirty water out and run it with DI water. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because if we leave it the way it is right now, all that calcium buildup is gonna build up inside this hose and we don't want that. So just turn it on. Let it run for, I don't know, like a minute or so, and then, you know, it'd be good to go. You gotta open the valve. So what you do, you wanna first bleed it. Do you hear all that air coming out? So once you get drips of water, we know the air has been pushed out and now just water is going into the pump. So now you're ready to turn it on. Go ahead, turn it on. And you open the valve. And just, just leave it and start, start reeling it in. You can start reeling it in. Uh -huh. Edgar, so seems like you, you're training them, but you mainly leave them by themselves? Oh, absolutely, yeah. So um, they've been on their own for about two months now, maybe. Um, but there are little things, like I said, per job specific that I just come, I check up on them or just refreshers, you know what I mean? Especially refreshers because 
right now we're, we're in the heavy gutter season. You know, maybe two months ago, they were still doing solar panel cleaning, window cleaning, slowly transitioning into gutter cleaning. But right now it's, you know, it's, what we have on, on the books all week is just, you know, mainly it's like 90% gutter cleanings. We have one solar panel cleaning. So Edgar, what responsibilities do you ask from them? For example, I see taking pictures after the job is done? Yeah, so there's always gonna be, so remember always, for those of you who are just watching or you know are just tuning in, we always run two-man crews. Two-man crews, is, it's gonna be our standard in every single van, every single truck. Why? Because of just the efficiency, getting it done. And two, which is the main reason, is for safety, right? If one of them falls off the roof, you have the other one to call the ambulance. Or if, I don't know, if they both fall off the roof, then I don't know what we're gonna do, but hey. We, <laughs> we definitely want to avoid that. Um, but so it's, for safety, it's always going to be two-man crew, right? Within those two guys in the van, there's going to be obviously one lead, right? And then the other one's going to be just a, you know, a regular laborer technician. So that one lead is going to have the main responsibility of making sure the van is washed, it's clean, making sure that they arrive to their appointments on time, making sure that, like you just said, Ray's, that they get the before and the after pictures, pictures making sure that they collect the payment, making sure that um, everything is, you know, done 100 percent satisfaction guarantee to the homeowner um, so a lot of it does fall on the lead but it, it's just you know it's their everyday thing just making sure they do the job right you know not just them but also their labor their helper that responsibly does obviously help me that way i don't have to be here every single job right because i got other things to do i want to make sure like i said at the beginning of the video that we scale this out that we just don't have two vans that we get four vans six vans and more employees right so when you leave that owner operator mindset or business um, model and go into employees you're able to do much more right the headaches are also bigger but if you're able to just have that support group with you i definitely have my support group you can know how to handle certain things right you can also learn how to how to um, handle your employees how to work with them how to make sure that they understand the whole vision that way we all share that vision that we all we all share that dream and make sure that everything is done right and properly now, what's one thing that is still your responsibility? Oh, my responsibility is making sure that these guys do the job correctly, right? Making sure that they're here on time, making sure that um, we, don't, we don't damage anything, making sure that in the end, right, the homeowner is happy falls on me, right? Because I want to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do in a efficient manner and in a professional manner. Like for example, when you, I mean, you guys didn't see it, but it blew off a lot of leaves off the roof that fell on the sides, fell on the driveway, or maybe you did see it. And Danny was walking around with the blower, right? Blowing all the leaves out you know, of the driveway, of the side yard. Cause you know, just because it wasn't in the gutter doesn't mean it's not gonna stay in the driveway and just leave it there. It's not our responsibility. Let the landscaper handle it. No, right? That, that debris came from us, from the roof. So now we're gonna go clean it up and make sure that everything is nice. And what I tell my guys is I want the property either A, to be the way it was when we got there, if it's nice and nice and beautiful, or to be better than before we got there. For example, if we arrived to your house and your water hose is all over the driveway, or there are leaves all over the driveway, right? By the time we leave, there's not gonna be any leaves, and that water hose will be rolled up, right? We're not gonna leave it the way we found it. Last question. Customer questions, customer complaints, they deal with that? at the spot or you deal with that? So it depends on what it is, right? Um, there's been maybe a couple couple concerns of like, just can you do this, can you do that? If it's more specific to just, I'm not happy with their work, right? And, and, and they've already gone and done it a couple times, you know, trying to fix it. And they're just not saying wasting time, but just they're running out of time because they either have more jobs or like the daylight's running out. Then um, yeah, then at that moment, then they'll deal with me the homeowner, right? And then we'll, we'll figure out what the best route is and making sure that everyone's happy, both we're happy and most importantly that the homeowner is happy, okay? All right, man, so you have two employees right now. What have you noticed works for them? Who's the lead, who's the assistant? Right, so right now we have uh, Daniel, Daniel's the lead, right? And then we have, uh, we, we, call, we call him Junior, his name is Steve. Uh, we have Junior helping out Danny and uh, they both have been working out really well, solid team, um, both youngsters. I love that they can really get on the roof, tackle it and not really have that, that fear in them, which sometimes is like, hey, be a little bit more careful guys. But I mean, they're great, you know? So as long as they have that confidence, which I've always said in many videos, you know, just have that confidence to tackle the job because if you get up on the roof and are just super, super scared or super 
cautious, you know, that overthinking it can lead to accidents. So just be confident about what you're doing, know what you're doing, and uh, you guys will definitely do a good job. But right now, um, they're collecting payment, okay? And I say them because right now we're gonna have Danny, he's, he's currently training Junior to start handling that lead position, okay? To collect payment, to take the pictures, to, to talk to the homeowners, to making sure that everything has been 100% corrected, has been completed, has been, you know, up to par to what the homeowner exactly wanted what they were told as well because our sales you know comes before them and they just show up saying we're here to gut we're here to clean gutters but the homeowner has always been told or our expectations have, have been set before they got here right so when they get here they just got to make sure that everything is completed and fulfilled to the expectations that the homeowner was told prior to them coming so right now they're they're about wrapping it all up like i said Making sure that you guys can trust your employees that is extremely important. That way you know that your lead can train the other lead, can train your, your you know, his helpers. That way it's a one whole collaborative teamwork effort and that you guys are able to get things done properly. All right guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'm extra, I'm extremely happy to be here again in front of this camera. Um, I've, got, I've gotten such huge motivational comments and uh, phone calls from all of you that have been watching. Happy New Year to everyone. I definitely hope you guys kill it. If you guys haven't started already, get on this, all right? Uh, give me a call in the description below. Please use that description below. There's a clarity link. And I say please because as, we've, as we're scaling this out, as things are picking up again, my schedule gets hectic. So I don't wanna be missing phone calls from you guys thinking that I'm, I'm dissing you or anything, right? Or that I'm not answering your phone calls or that I don't care. But just use that clarity link. That way we, guys can, we can pick a time that works for both you and I and we can go over the questions that you have. We're gonna move on to our second house. So stay tuned for more videos. As always, it's Edgar with All One Solar Shine. If you're in the Santa Clara County, Sacramento County, and areas, you know, bits in between here and there, because we def I definitely have a huge network of cleaners now that I can definitely refer you over. So if you're in, I don't know, Manteca, Tracy, or if you're in Davis, or if you're in all these other cities, Redwood City, or if you're in Salinas, somewhere that maybe doesn't fall within these counties that I mentioned, I know I have someone that can take care of you, okay? And these people are extremely um, trustworthy and they're hard workers and I know that they'll do a professional job just like we do. So stay tuned everyone, have a good day, peace.